All right, well, one of the reasons people are so frustrated about jobs and trade is because of countries like India. It is the epicenter of the outsourcing wave. I'm about to go there to find out if India is really poised to become the next economic superpower. To get started, I sat down recently with Kamal Nath, the Indian Minister of Commerce and Industry, and I asked him about the one thing everyone mentions when talking about India, infrastructure. Well, infrastructure is also a big challenge for us to keep pace with our growth infrastructure, just not of roads and ports and airports, but roads, rural roads, which connect villages, drinking water, uh, health, medical access to medical facilities. Uh, I had seen a number today, actually, about a trillion dollars being spent in India on roads. Is that number about right, and how quickly will that be deployed? Uh, it's, it's being deployed over five years, and uh, uh, that's what's needed. Roads uh, connecting urban centers, roads connecting to ports, to airports, to rural connectivity. Uh, it's happening, and uh, we, we, we need to have huge investments in the energy sector. Uh, we need huge investments in our port sector. So that's all happening. It's, uh, it's uh, on the anvil. And do you think that there's going to be a, more and more foreign investment in India? But do you think that structure of controlling foreign investment is something that will be around for the long term? Retail is one of the few, very few, amongst the three, four sectors which are not open. The rest are all absolutely open. And we are having investments. Uh, four years ago, our investments, our FDI was $2.2 billion. Uh, this year, our... Uh, uh, investments are $25 billion. Now, obviously, it's because of the liberalization. Mm -hmm. So there are just a handful of sectors, not even a handful, less than a handful of sectors where FDI is not allowed. Otherwise, FDI is allowed. To, it's it's uh, all open. Many people talk about how 20 million people a year in India go from eating one meal a day to two. Are you concerned that India will remain self-sufficient in food production? We have been self-sufficient except in edible oils and lentils. We have been major exp importers of edible oils and lentils, and unless we have a monsoon failure, uh, we uh, are self-sufficient in wheat, we're self-sufficient in rice, we are self-sufficient in sugar, so uh, we don't see a problem, uh, even with these growing numbers. What would you say the biggest difference is between China and India? Well, we call ourselves the fastest growing free market economy. Um, and uh, there are differences in governance. Our growth story is a domestic market-driven um, growth story. China's export market-driven growth story. Uh, but China has its own genius. We have our own genius. China and India are, are friends. Of course, we, we have good relations. Uh, we compete with each other, and we have good relations with each other. Well, hopefully that piqued your interest about what's going on in India. Uh, I'm going there. I'm going to be live from India on Friday. We have amazing shows planned for you. And just keep in mind, when he talked about that domestic demand story, 300 million people in India are classified as so-called middle class, meaning they have money to spend on goods and brands from this country in particular. That's three times the number of people who have that money in China. And it's almost as big as the entire population of the United States. Talk about what might be the biggest market on earth. It's India. That's why we're going there live on Friday.